stuff. Just because. Ugh. All right. Anyway. All right. We live. All right. All right. All right. YouTube, you motherfuckers. How in the hell are you? This is Mike in the house. And I have my special guest. He is one of the most hardworking people on YouTube. Um, this is my homeboy, Reg. What's goody? Shout out to Reg. Uh, go subscribe to his channel, Reg Reviews, where they talk about not only music, but movies. And I was just there a couple weeks ago, um, you know, doing the whole vinyl collection and stuff like that. So if you missed out on the vinyls that we picked out there, I don't know what to tell you. So, all right. So today we're going to be talking about the 1987, I think, very underrated movie, The Principal. Um, this one stars Jim Belushi, the late, great Louis Gossett Jr., Ray Don Chong, Michael Wright, and um, an all-star cast. So before we get into this review, um, how did you get into the principal? If I'm not mistaken, I think you put me on the movie, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. Yeah, because... Um... We would just, you know how we randomly just talk about shit, you know what I'm saying? Right. And honestly, um, you we were mentioning Jim Belushi. Yeah. He said, check out the movie The Principal. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So you actually put me on the movie. Mm. Okay. You know, honestly, I, this is this is the thing. The late 80s was very notorious for the white man savior movies and shit like I that. I agree. Yes. <laughs> You can say it's, you can say the trend started back with the 1950s movie like Black Board Fever. I think Black Board Fever with um Sidney Poitier. Yes. Yeah, which is a classic gritty ass movie. I need um, to watch that. I think it's on YouTube. I think. Okay. Yeah, but then the late 80s, you had like these. You had movies like Dangerous. Not um late 80s, 90s. You had movies like Dangerous Minds, which I never liked that movie. Mm. Soundtrack, soundtrack was classic, but the mm -hmm. movie. Mm. First of all, they ripped the story off a black teacher. Right, the, the black teacher. They they pretty much whitewashed the story. And right. Like, yeah. Like, what's niggas in the hood listening to Bob Dylan? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now I listen to Bob Dylan sometimes. And like, right. Oh, come on now. I'm I'm a different kind of nigga, but that's a different story. No, I feel and you. Of course. When, it, when it's not the white savior movies and stuff like that, you had movies like Lean On Me, which came out two years after this movie. Yes. Stuff like that, too, with Joe Clark, you know. Yeah. Um, which that movie is a classic movie. I like that movie. Yeah. But I've, I've seen that movie being compared to this movie we're talking about today and stuff like that so many times. Honestly, I, I like Lean On Me, but this one's more realistic because right. even though that's based on Joe Clark's story, there was some shit that they kind of fabricated a little bit on that shit too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, honestly, they said them students didn't really do it as good as a test as Nate motherfucker made out to be in the movie, but that's another story for a different day. Mm -hmm. And and one thing about this movie when I watch it, it's not one of those white man savior movies. Cause in all fairness, this motherfucker didn't really give a shit about them kids like that until the time came for it. <laughs> he didn't really give a shit. Like he was just, they just all. Oh, he was just, he was like a busy. But it, it, it's a complex movie. Yes, we're gonna, we're gonna talk, it's a very complex movie. Yeah, and this is not the kind of movie that has a happy ending. You know what I'm saying? This is that not is one of those true. happy ending movies. Like, oh, the teacher learns his ways. Oh, hard that movie. Um, Hardball. Mm. Uh, that's another one of those white man savior movies and shit. Yeah, Lord. Oh my God! So Lord. that's one thing about this movie because we've seen a principal like like this motherfucker. Right? We've we we've seen a principal like Rick before in in the shit like that too. Mm -hmm. we've seen a teacher like Mrs. Always 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 go. You know, Ray, yeah. Ray Dawn's character. Mm -hmm. Hell, I've seen motherfuckers. I've seen motherfuckers as crazy as motherfucking um. Uh, What's the bully's name? Um, um Michael Wright. Michael Wright, yeah, yeah. 
Big the Duncan. Big the Duncan, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Now, see motherfuckers as crazy as him. Right. We'll talk about, we'll, we'll talk about the, ju- the jeweler in a minute, though. For real. But one thing, I, one thing I didn't know about this movie was the fact that um, Jim Belushi actually reprised his role in another movie four years later called Braxcus. But it's not like anything connection. Mm-hmm. I think I, I just found that out when I was like watching the movie. But yeah, yeah. This movie, I have a lot to say. No, oh, same. Yeah. I do. Lord Jesus. Oh, God. How did I get into this movie? Um, let's see. So I was looking under uh, Jim Belushi's, uh, you know, filmography, and I saw The Principal, and it kind of, like, stood out in a way because all of, back then when I was collecting VHSs and stuff, all I, I was just watching, like, action-adventure movies from the 80s, so... I saw this one and I was like, okay, this is like a, a type of movie that I wouldn't mind seeing. So I saw it, I bought it on DVD and I fell in love with it. The minute, like once it got to the middle, once when the gritty stuff started, like kind of like, I'm not going to say as far as to the beginning, but like kind of like towards the middle, that's when I started falling in love with it. I was like, okay. This is like a revenge type movie. I was like, okay, now I'm curious to see what's going to happen. And then once the ending came, I'm like, oh, shit. Now I love this movie. Yes. Yeah. Um, and and to, be, to warn you guys, this is not exactly a happy ending. And I'm just going to warn you all right now. But it's more of a it's kind of a satisfying ending but at the same time it's not exactly a happy ending all right so let's see with the principal this movie came out in 1987 and this is like the late 80s you had movies like um lethal weapon and you had robocop and You know, you had all those other, you know, great movies and stuff like that. So, basically, like, the budget for it was, like, um, I think it was, like, $11 $11 million. It was on an $11 million budget. And, basically, um, it opened... um, It opened... (laughs) September 20th, 1987. So, of course, it was like towards towards Oscar season, but of course, this movie didn't get this movie didn't get an Oscar. Of course, it's not it's not those type of movies. No, it's too good for the Oscars, honestly. No, exactly. So, it grossed. um, I think it was like 19 million dollars at the box office, which it's not too too bad you know i say it actually is pretty good for 1987 you know what i'm saying um this was directed by um christopher kane if i'm not mistaken um he did some other stuff too uh what did he do oh he did a movie um that that next year called young guns had an all-star cast, including Emilio Estevez, Charlie Sheen, uh, Dermot Maroney, and just had all-star all-star cast. Um, he also um, did the next Karate Kid with Hilary Swank. And oh, he did that? Okay. Yes, he did. Yes, yes. How you go from this movie to that? <laughs> exactly. Thank you. That's why I'm trying. I'm trying to figure that out. N- niggas thought Hillary Swank was a boy for the most oh, of that movie, right? Right. And what's funny is that I actually watched the movie. I'm gonna review this movie. I'm gonna review it because I I want to break. I want to do a Karate Kid breakdown oh, pretty soon. Put, so wait, wait. You gonna include a Jada Smith movies too? No. Okay, okay. <laughs> no. Uh, okay. I, that 
that's going to be, I'm going to be honest with you, that's going to be separate because I, w- I want to do Karate Kid 1 through, I want to do Mr. Miyagi Universe, the original, like, at Merida. Like, I want to do that universe. But, I don't know, like, with, with, with the next Karate Kid, it's like, what? What what did I just watch? You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Um yeah, so this was directed by Chris McCain. Um this one stars Jim Bellucci, um, who was in um TV show um According to Jim, um a movie called Salvador back in nineteen eighty six, a movie called Thief, um you know, he's been in a whole bunch of other movies and stuff like that. He is the brother of J- uh, the late great John Belushi. He plays uh, Rick Latimer, where um, he was basically teaching at a safer school before getting promoted to a principal at Brandel High. And Brandel High is like a, it's more like an inner, inner city school. It's more like a dangerous school than the previous school that he went to. So um, then you have Louis Gossett Jr., who plays Jake Phillips. Rest in peace to Louis Gossett Jr., who um, passed away uh, um, just not too long ago. I think it was last month. Yeah. Yeah. Um, He's been in a slot, sloop of good, great movies. Um, he won an Oscar for an officer and a gentleman. Um, but best, uh, I think it was best supporting actor um, at the 1983 Oscars. He was in movies like um, with, uh, uh, Iron Eagle, um, Firewalker with Chuck Norris, uh, played a lot of TV movies, and he was also in um, The Punisher 1989 with Dolph Lundgren as well, too. That one, that one, in my honest opinion, is the best Punisher. That's just my opinion. I don't care what anybody says. So um, then you have Ray Don Chong. Who plays Hillary Orozco or Orozco, however you want to pronounce her name? Um, Ray Don Chong was in uh, Beat Street. Um, what else? Uh, the Color Purple, she was in that. And she was in a movie called Soul Man, which is. I'm probably the only person who actually likes this movie, likes that movie. With um, Steve Thomas Howell, which they dated at one point too. So, and then you have Michael Wright, who plays Victor Duncan. Um, for all my Michael Wright fans, he was in the Five Heartbeats. Right. Um, he was in a TV series called V. Um, v the Final Battle. V the miniseries. V the original series. Um, he was also in The Wanderers. He guest starred on um, Miami Vice. Yeah, I think very dope actor. I think highly underrated. All right. So what this movie is basically about, and I'm gonna give. I'm gonna get to it with all of my. Try not to spoil any. Try not to like spoil too much of the movie. But this movie, basically Jim Belushi's character, um, Rick Latimer, he basically is going through, I don't know if he's going through a breakup or he's going through a divorce. I don't know what the case is, but this film opens up with him at the bar with some friends. He gets drunk and then he sees his ex-girlfriend or ex-wife whatever you want to call it, they didn't really explain that. Um, he takes a bat and chases after the boyfriend and he just beating the shit out of his car, basically, you know, del- deliberately. And 
like calling him douchebag and all that stuff, blah, 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 blah. So now he's basically promoted to being the principal after yeah. all this is done. Now, yeah, but that's you what makes what? him a principal, right? Exactly. That's yeah. what makes him a principal. Beat somebody's car. Oh, you're promoted to the principal. But here's the catch, though. The catch is he's promoted. He's promoted to the principal, all right. He's promoted to an inner city where he sees a fight that breaks down between White Zach and what is that? What is that other character? And he's played by um, Troy Wimbush. Oh, a babe. Oh, Emil. Emil. Now, Troy Wimbush. For those of you who don't know, that that's one of Theo's friends. He played one of Theo's friends in the Cosby Show. Um, he he was the person who actually shot Calvin in House of Pain, as well. To all my House of Pain fans, um, yeah. So uh, Vladimir, he sees this fight go down, and um, then at this point. Everybody's pretty much knows he's the principal and stuff like that. So there he holds a um he holds like a some sort of like something in an audit in, in an auditorium. Um and then he enters Michael Wright and you know telling his people that like Shut this shit down, you know what I'm saying? And then a big fight breaks out, and then that's when they both meet and stuff like that. So, um, then like later on in the movie, this movie starts to get gritty because where it gets gritty at, where like Victor Duncan. Now you see, not you. Now you at this point you kind of know his backstory. You know he's like a drug dealer. You know that he's like this bully. So, um, he had his his um, you know his thugs beat up, um, Latimer, which I think one of the grittiest and bloodiest scenes in the movie. So now you now Latimer, the principal, he is pretty much from there. It's like a revenge tale. So I like I said, I don't want to spoil too much of this movie though. But I have plenty to say about this movie. This is a movie that how do I put it? It's very. It's kind of complex. Because it starts off as like it does have some comedic elements in it. Like the bar scene, you know, was kind of comedic where, you know, he takes a bat and he um uh, you know it pretty much fucks up um his wife's or girlfriend's boyfriend's car up, basically. And then, you know, that that was pretty funny and then you, you you know you got some like dramatic and then you got some dark scenes too you know what i mean like this this movie is pretty dark oh, yeah. and if you think that there's some killing in this movie well i will say this the kill count in this movie is surprisingly one or is it or is it two i could have sworn it was two but so far, well, it the kill count as of right now, it's pretty much one, one to two people. And with, I don't know because can you say this movie is an action movie or can you say this is a crime drama? Because mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, what what do you think? Do you do you think this is an action or do you think this is like a Crime, like a crime drama thriller. Like, what do you think? Hmm. I say action. Action. 
Yeah, I say action. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, because you have... You know, you have, you have like, this nice chase scene, um, you know, when um, Latimer, he, you know, takes a bat and he knocks the drugs off these, um, knocks the, you know, the drugs and the money and all that stuff, like, getting revenge on Victor. And then once he gets back to the school, you know, you have this nice chase scene. And then once he gets back to the school, Victor Duncan, he's holding a gun. And then everybody at the school at this point is looking out the window and seeing all this. So that comes to tell you that, you know, Vic, you know, everybody sees Victor trying to, sh you know, kill the principal, shoot, shoot the principal. You know what I'm saying? So that was kind. That was kind of genius, but it was kind of dark at the same time. So like at this point now, Latimer is trying to take down Duncan. And the way they did it, and this is one thing I had an issue with. Towards the end of the movie, when um, Victor's holding, well, yeah, um, Victor and his um, friend Jo, his uh, friend Jojo, Jojo had a knife to um, Latimer, and you know when Victor, you know, told him to, you know, cut, cut him and stuff like that. Um, I hate when they cut. They cut it between that scene and Lewis Gossett fighting this one dude. You know what I'm saying? Right. I hate when they cut. I hate when they do that because it's not very inventive. It just kind of takes away the suspense you know what i'm saying it kind of takes away the thrill it's kind of like a distraction like right. it should have been on like one take you know what i mean like it should have been like it i don't know to me they should have created something a little bit better with that like if you're gonna do something like if you're gonna do something like that have it all on one take like one scene you know what I mean? Louis Gossett fighting that dude. Then you got Jim Belushi pinned between two guys. Right. But I'm going to have to say this. The real person in this movie was what is what is his name? Um, Art, uh, Arturo Diego Art, Arturo Diego. When I tell you he knocked that gun off of Victor Duncan with that baseball bat, that was a real motherfucker. And mind you, the a couple scenes before he was fighting Emil, he jumped on me. Emil started like welling on him. That is one. That is one real motherfucker. And mind you, he's puny as hell. He looks like <laughs> he's in fucking middle school at this point. I'm like this motherfucker. I'm like he ain't afraid of no one. That that is a real motherfucker right there. For real though. I ain't gonna hold you. So the fact that you stand up to Victor Duncan, mind you, this nigga six two six three. Okay, that he 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 a real one. I I have to give him that one. I he has my utmost respect. He was like I ain't afraid of nobody. You know what I'm saying? So. All right. Um, what are your thoughts on this movie? I love this movie, honestly. Mm -hmm. It's definitely one of the best movies to come out that year in 87. A very realistic portrayal. Um, a very realistic portrayal and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? Um, when it comes to the inner city schools and whatnot, too. And I definitely feel that when it comes to that portrayal, you can either make it cartoony or just make it like water wash. And I feel like it had the right balance. You know what I'm saying? And to be honest with you, this is definitely one of those movies that perfectly captures that moment. Mm -hmm. I feel like the whole cast was very great from Jim Belushi to Lou Gossett. I feel like they were all, they had a very great chemistry and whatnot too. Definitely one of Lou Gossett's best, <clears throat> excuse me, 
one of Lugas's best um roles he's ever done when it comes right. to um acting. And I definitely feel like he should have gotten recognized a bit more than this one. Yeah. You know, um Ray Don Chong, you know what I'm saying? She definitely did a thing. I she can be hit or miss sometimes depending on the movie. And honestly, she kind of says some things off. She says some things that I kind of didn't agree with one time. Honestly, she I feel like she don't appreciate her black side, to be real with you. But that's another story for a different day. Um, but she definitely does thing. But there was some time when she came off a bit whiny, in my opinion, stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? She came off a bit whiny, but you agree. Yeah, especially when seeing when um she confronts um Rick in the in the classroom, she says stuff like that. It's like, this is my class. You just come in here with your thugs, y'all. Y'all was like, it just came off a bit laughable to me, but I agree. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um to me the true MVP might go to Michael Wright, you know, mm. in my opinion. I feel like he definitely did his thing on that role as the gang leader and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like he his performance was very, very, very good in that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I love this. I love this movie. It's not one of those movies I don't see it being talked about a lot. You know, right. movie movie talks about a lot. Right. And I kind of feel like it gets overshadowed by other movies, like, you know, of course, Lean On Me. Yeah. Man, but this one is definitely one of those movies that you have to see it to believe it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, I agree 110%. And um, what's funny is that Michael Keaton. He was considered for the role of uh, Rick Latimer, Jim, Jim Belushi's part, and um, Gary Busey. But Gary Busey opted to do uh, Lethal Weapon. Right. You know what I mean? Michael Keaton, he did a movie called The Squeeze back in 87 as well, too, with Ray Don Chong, of all people. Mm. Um. Yeah, and you mentioned um, Jim Belushi. He also rep- kind of like reprised, played the same role in uh, Jesse Ventura's uh, Abraxas, which that was like a, I, I saw that movie. That was like a blink of an eye. I don't know what the connection is about. I don't know. Maybe, um, I, I don't know. I, I don't know, but. Um, another another character, another actress who I want to mention, um, Kelly Minter, uh, who played Trina. Um, that the girl who um, Latimer uh, tried to tutor and stuff before he got beat up. I thought she gave one hell of a fool. I thought for she didn't have she didn't have much to do, but I think. Back then, I think she was very, she was kind of an underrated actress as well too. I thought she was pretty good in that in that movie too. Right. Um, Radon Chong, I thought she was the weakest in that movie. I didn't care for her in this one. Mm. And with and pretty much the same reason you mentioned, um, where she was in the classroom. And um, she confronts um, Vladimir, and it's like, I right, first, okay, you know, you at a fucking inner city high school, okay, right? And second of all, like, I right, just, j- 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 just do your job, you know what I'm saying? Like, I get it, but then at the same time, it's like, uh, no. And she didn't really do it for me. She didn't. She to me, she wasn't given much to do. And the one scene I didn't, I felt bad when White Zach tried to, you know, ev- you know, try to rape her, and um, you know, Latimer came and, you know, well, first off, you shouldn't be punching students. First, first off, especially younger, but. Um, at the same time, like he had to do what he had to do, you know what I'm saying? And right, and and you know, white Zach, he needed to get punched. He that was just it. He needed to. I and then 
the guy who played White Zach, um, JJ Cohen, he was also in um he was also in Back to the Future too. Um he was he was a little he was just too whiny. He was just he 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 just and then the scene which was fun the funniest one of the funniest scenes was when he was hiding and Lewis Gossett was running, coming towards him, and then he he tried to slash him with the knife and <laughs> he, he Lewis Gossett, he just like he just tossed him. He got stuck in a window. Like I'm like, oh my, okay, that was okay. You're done. You done. You already got beat up by two. You already got beat up by two staff members. Okay, just give it up. Like you can't, you can't fight. You got, you got beat up by Emil. You got beat up by. You basically got beat up by JoJo in the auditorium. Then so all right. Okay, you need to go. Sorry, you can't. You just can't fight. Um, Jim Belushi, I thought this was one of his best performances. Um, I thought he excelled pretty good in this one. And this was like a ang- this was like an angry type of movie. It was, and then, you know, it, it it did send like a message. You know what I'm saying? Um, Lewis Gossett, I agree with you a hundred percent. I thought this was one of his best performances as well, too. Um, Michael Wright, I think very underrated as an actor. Um, I think this was one of my favorite scenes in that movie was he confronted him and Latimer in that it it was the lunchroom scene. Mm-hmm. When he said like, I expel you, you fucker. When I tell you and the and the jewel just came out of his mouth. I'm like, okay, all right, no, 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 no. When he drew, when he started drooling, that was it was the jewel for me that, that had me dying laughing. Yeah, I was like, oh, like for I real, intentional or not, for real. So I'm like, I, right, I, right. um, but yeah, um. Yeah, everybody did a thing in this movie. Um, I give this movie two thumbs way, way up for its um, grittiness um, and its storytelling. And the action was pretty much well paced. Um, my gripe was, like I said, the cut scenes towards the end of the movie. That is my gripe. And then I would love to hear a little bit more of um, I kind of wanted to know a little bit more of Latimer's like backstory in a sense. Just a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? Uh, But that's not the biggest it's not a huge deal. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, so I give this movie a t- two thumbs, two thumbs way up for the principal. Yeah, I definitely give this is like a ten out of ten for me. Mm-hmm. Some of the action scenes might come off a bit, in some scenes, but yeah, it will still have you at the edge of your seat. I definitely give this a ten out of ten. This is a classic movie. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definite classic from start to finish. Very highly underrated. No one talks about this movie. Right. Um, I have it on uh, Blu-ray. I don't know if it's going to get a 4K release outlet. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe with, like, special feature, you know, extra features and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So... Yeah, I have this. Uh, this is available on Blu-ray. Um, it's not that not that expensive either. I think it's like twelve to like fifteen dollars. I think. And this is also on YouTube too, as well. So. Yes, sir. Yeah, definitely watch. You know, watch it while you can. 
Do you know how YouTube is sometimes? You get it for free, and then a couple months later, you end up paying for it. <coughs> so. All right. Um, yeah, I can stay on here for about another five minutes. That's cool. Tony and Ray Stone, what's good, y'all? What's good with y'all? So. Man, I tell you, um, you know what this movie kind of reminds me of, Loki? Mm. Mm. Remember that Samuel Jackson movie, 187 from 97? Yeah. Yeah. See, that movie, I'm not going to hold you. That It started off good, but I did not like the ending of that movie. I need to rewatch that. Yeah. It's a, it's an okay movie. It's. Yeah. Um. I like, you know, I like movies like The Principal and stuff. It, you know, it just depends on who's in it and how good it is and how they go about it. Dangerous Minds, I need to rewatch that. I know I saw, I saw it a while ago and it was, I thought, I thought it was pretty decent, but I mean, I don't know. It it looks um pretty decent. Yeah, it does so, look like a decent movie. Yeah. But um yeah, they don't make movies like that anymore, honestly. They don't. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Ray Shaw, I would, but I'm about to get off here in the next, like, literally two minutes. Mm. Yeah, I didn't want to. I didn't want to be on here too, too long. But um, yeah, do you have anything um, coming up? I know tomorrow at midnight, um, Try and I are going to do the state property soundtrack reviews and stuff. Mm -hmm. mm. That's good. Yes, sir. That's pretty good. Yeah, of course, Saturday is the 227 retrospective. What time is that? Three o'clock. Okay. I should be back home by then. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to record store. Um, well, on Saturday, but they they close at two o'clock. I don't know why. Yeah, okay. So it's just like a store in Michigan, and they only open on Saturdays, maybe from ten to two. So I was looking online, and they have some finals that I am interested in. So I'm gonna get them on Saturday. Mind you, they close. They they close at two o'clock, literally. So it's like I, right, I guess I have to get up a little early on Saturday. Mm. So it'd be like that. Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna make my announcements now before I get off. Uh, so this week coming up, what is going on this week? Um. Okay, so I'm gonna be doing a um, vinyl vinyl pickup um, video and a movie pickup video too. Um, that would be sometime this week, maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow, maybe depends, depending on time and how tired I am. Um, let's see, this Saturday I will be on uh, Red Reviews. Doing the um, 227 um, breakdown. So, yeah, definitely stay tuned for that. Um, what else? Oh, um, next week will be the Mama's Family um, breakdown. Let me know what, what, what day. Yeah. 
Okay. Um. Yeah. Send me your schedule. Well, yeah, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did say that. Yeah, I did say yeah. that. Yeah. Yep. Send me your schedule, and then yeah, we'll definitely go from there. It'll be most likely. It'll probably be around midnight. Most like maybe, maybe. But if I can get my notes together, it might be earlier than that. Okay. So. I'm gonna try to do. I'm trying to do more like when it comes to like breakdowns and stuff like that. I'm trying to do it more earlier, a little bit, a little bit more. I'm trying to do more earlier live streams. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, that would definitely that would definitely be a thing. So yeah, expect Mama's family breakdown next sometime next week to be announced. The date. Okay. Also, uh, Ghost Dad. Oh shit! You do you see the excitement on my face? <laughs> now, I was thinking about doing a a double trash review. But why I put myself? Why I put myself in whoever wants to join through that torture? So I'm gonna go do Ghost Dad first. Now, mind you, I will be intoxicated while I do this move, movie review, <laughs> and I'm going to do Lena Part Seven as well too. So. Oh Jesus! Uh, yeah, that's gonna be coming. That's coming. So yeah, if you want to join for one, the, one of those or both of those, let me I'll, know. I'll join for Ghost Dad. Uh, Ghost Dad, okay. I'll join for that one. Uh, oh boy, we're in a part seven. That's on YouTube too. Oh wow! Hey. Uh, if I do Lena part, if I do Lena part six, it might be this weekend. Uh, oh boy! You should do it on four twenty. You'll give niggas a laugh while while they smoke. When is four twenty anyway? That's what next week. This Saturday. Oh God! <laughs> that's uh, that's my sister's birthday too. Happy birthday to your sister. Yeah, shout out to my sister Debbie. Uh, her birthday is actually Saturday. Happy early birthday. Oh, wait, Sean wants to join in Go Staff for Entertainment Purposes. All right. Well, prepare to laugh because this is probably going to be more of a run than anything else. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, wish me luck with uh, Leonard. That's that part six. Part, whatever, whatever the hell part Leonard is. Oh, God. First five uh, was so bad. Uh huh? The first five was so bad it was unreleased. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, all right, but you know what? I'm going to do a surprise. Before before I even go, all right, I'm going to show you guys one vinyl that I picked up. Oh, shit. Just, just one. Before I go, before we go, I am going to actually show one solid vinyl that I picked up. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do an unboxing real quick. You only, you guys only get one. I'm going to do an um, unboxing. Now, mind you, I got this off of eBay. And, yeah. And I'll give you a clue. Reg, you got this album. Hmm. So, let me see. Ghost Dad 2, the Rufy Effect. That's funny. 
Oh, All right. Right now, you're going to see an unboxing. And that is my cat. Who always wants to be in the camera. Oh, Lord. Yep. And I had to get this album, too. I had to. All right, cat. Come on. All right. I don't think anybody will know what this album is. It. So. All right. So this is from I believe 1973. Okay. Oh. Yes. Sylvia Pillar Talk. Classic album. Now. Remember I told you I was jealous because you had it? Yeah. Well, I looked on eBay. I'm like, I got to get it. Like, what is the price? I don't care what the price is. It wasn't too bad. It wasn't actually too bad. The price of it, I got it on eBay. It came pretty quick. It wasn't too bad at all. Like, I actually... I never listened to the whole album, but Pillow Talk is literally my favorite song. And I've heard it on Soul Train, too. And then I'm like, oh, wow. They actually played. I'm like, okay. This is actually. Now I want this album. So, yeah. Um, I'm definitely going to listen to this album. That's a dope album. Yeah, Very it is. Integrated. Yeah, I agree. I agree. In pretty good condition. So, but yep, that's all y'all gonna get right as of right now. But um, yeah, um, I'm gonna get off. Of, all right, we're gonna end this live stream right here. All right, so you guys saw the uh, movie review, The Principal, 1987. Um, as Austin said, he saw it many times. Yeah, I don't blame you. I saw it many times, too. Um, it is on YouTube, and it is also on VHS, DVD, and Blu-ray. So with that being said, we are out of here. Thank you so much for having me, boss. Yeah, no problem. And we will see you guys in the next live stream. Peace. Peace.